Greetings everyone. Today we are making the interesting part. This is going to be the Instagram actual bot. And here we had opening browser. I did comment on that because currently I do not have this function and we need to create it first. Now there are a couple of things that we're going to be needing to do before we actually get into the bot. And these are the botting statements and of course the Selenium driver, the Chrome driver that we need to install. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new file over here. I'm going to call this Instagram bot.py. And there we go. This is what we're going to be actually working with. Now, before I actually do start, here I'm going to say print. I just want to see if I can start that. Yeah, okay. So here we can actually start the two initial scripts whenever we want, meaning that here we had hello. I started it and I printed out hello. This is important because this is what we're going to be using for testing. Of course, at the beginning, we're not going to test with the user interface. Actually, the password and username should be tested with that. But I mean that it's going to be very tedious if we need to write every single time. So that's why I'm going to take the password and username extracted from the user interface, store it somewhere, and then I'm just going to run the script in order for testing. The whole product, of course, is going to, to be complete. Now, I'm going to remove that, and there are a couple of things that we need to do first. Now, the first thing that we want to do is importing statements. I was thinking about something. Should I tell you how it's going to work now, or should I just tell you while we're building? I think while we're, while we're building the project, is going to be a bit more beneficial because you're going to see what we're, what we're actually doing and you might assimilate it a little bit better. All right, uh, the first thing we want to do is to open up the terminal here and write pip, uh, for some reason, pip install selenium. Now, pip install selenium for you is going to install the selenium. For me, it's saying that requirement already satisfied, already have the stuff. Once you actually install it, what you want to do is write this. So from Selenium web driver common by, we're going to import by. This is going to be used in order to find the things because we can find the things in the DOM tree by either CSS selector, uh, expat, full expat, and so on and so forth. I'm going to show you everything. The web driver is going to be the one use that we're going to be using with keys we do not need. The web driver is going to be something that we're going to be using with the Chrome driver that I have already mentioned in the first video, and I do hope that you install it. If you have not installed it, I think that I can show you again. Again, these links are going to be by you in the comments, so do not be afraid. You can always find them. I'm sorry about that. I just had a little bit of trouble. Chrome web driver download. And here we can actually see this Chrome driver, web driver for Chrome. And here you can install this. Install it for the Windows that you're going to be using. <laughs> for either Macintosh if you're using Apple, Linux if you're using something else, and Windows, of course, if you're using Windows. Install it and place it somewhere. Now, it's very important to actually place it somewhere. What, what I mean by that is just remember where you're placing it. For example, place it on D drive. And then you can, I think it was something like that. Doesn't matter. And let's say Chrome driver. Just remember to place the driver. So I just want to say how important this is. Place the driver and remember where you placed it. Very important to remember where you placed it because obviously we're gonna be opening it. And of course we are going to need to know the location. Good, next we're going to import this time and random. Time and random is going to be used because in our world, when we're creating a bot, bots are usually working very fast, obviously. And we want to slow them down. Now, I want to imitate human action because otherwise it's going to be very it's going to be very dangerous because they can ban your account. In order for me to simulate human-like behavior, I want to have random times. What I mean by that is, for example, I am going to open a post, right? This is going to be a post of, I don't know, somebody. And here we're going to have, I believe, on the right section of the post, you're having these things, right? So this is the comment here, the heart over here, and I am going to press the heart, right? So I'm just going to like the photo. Now, if I do this very quickly, because here we have also these, which are going to be the buttons that you're going to scroll to the right, to the left. So next photo and previous one. If I like 
press this, then like again and press this, right? So this is the cycle. One, two. Obviously, we're having the same diff, meaning that we're having the same layout. And I'm also going to press these two buttons. And if you press them very, very quickly, you're going to be taught as a bot. Even if you do it as a human, for example, if you're scrolling on your phone, now they make it snapping. But if you're scrolling on the phone and you're liking that a lot, you're going to be noticed as a bot and you're going to be blocked. Your account is going to be blocked. So we need to defend against that. That's why we're putting this. Good. Now, let's see what we're going to need to do next. All right. Now what we're going to do, I've written down some comments so you can always see what we're aiming for while I'm explaining. The first thing is to creating the Chrome path. Chrome path. Now this is used, as I said, because it's very important for you to open the Chrome browser, actually the browser, Google browser with the Chrome driver. Now this is what is going to allow us to actually have Selenium inside. So this is very important. Keep your path known and place it here on a variable called Chrome path. The next thing is actually pretty easy. We're going to be opening, finally, we're going to be opening the browser. And what we're going to do now is we're going to take this function opening browser that I showed into the user interface. I'm going to say copy and boom, there we go. Now, there are a couple of interesting here, interesting things here that we're not going to be talking about just as of yet. I want to explain first this. Opening browser is going to take four parameters. Obviously, the username, the password, and let's say I want it to be a bit smaller though, for example, 12. The username, the password, should follow and should comment. If you remember, these are the ones that are global parameters in our user interface. And now when we actually have this function, we can go to the bot user interface and we can definitely remove this. And we still cannot find it. Just leave it here. We cannot find it because we haven't imported anything yet, right? So this is not a problem. We're going to do that. Now, opening the browser is going to be done by the following thing. First of all, we're also going to have global variables called follow people and comment on posts. These are going to be common here. And here I'm just going to say variables. Variables. Now I was thinking about that because creating Chrome driver is still a variable, but I don't like the way it sounds variables and then below creating the Chrome driver. This might be reworked in the next video. All right. So global follow people and comment on post. Now we're going to be taking the global should comment and should follow from the user interface. We're going to assign them over here. And since, and since they're going to be global, then every single function that's going to be in our Instagram bot py right, right over here is going to have is going to be notified, not notified because we're not using events, but it's going to know, it's going to point at the same memory and we're going to be taking what we have received from the user interface. This is very important. Again, we're not pointing at different memories. We're pointing at one memory cell over here. That's why the global is. So we're just going to store it here and we're not going to store it in two different locations, right? That's pretty much it. We're storing it at one and that's why every single other function that's other than opening browser. For example, I have uh, opening browser version two. Version two will still know about follow people and comment on posts because these things here are global. All right, now when we actually did that, follow people is going to be equal to should follow and comment on post, which is global variable is gonna be equal to should comment. And actually we should be writing these over here as variables right below the Chrome path. Good. As you can see now, follow people is going to be equal, is going to be first of all global, meaning that we're going to store one memory location for follow people. It's not going to be local to the function. It's going to be equal to should follow, right? Which is local to the function because that's what we're receiving from the user interface. Comment on post, still it's going to be equal to false at first because keep in mind that we're always starting with red. Now, if I run this here, I need to comment on that in order for me to run it. I always start with red. Right? I always start with red, meaning that if I don't change anything, I just connect, then I am going to use false as a comment and follow on people's posts. Good. Then we are going to declare global driver. I'm going to declare that as a global because first of all, the first thing that we want to do is to hide automation. Hiding automation is done by a couple of steps here. We're going to import JavaScript flags. I'm going to show you how to hide an automation in 
the next video. So here just uncomment that driver is going to be equal to our web driver that comes from the Selenium dot Chrome because we're going to be using Chrome executable path is going to be equal to our Chrome path. So executable path is where am I going to be searching for the Chrome driver in order for us to start it. This is obviously going to be Chrome Pad, or you can just do this. It doesn't really matter, it's the same thing, but I just prefer everything to be on a variable because it's easier to, to read. All right, and options are going to be the hiding automation. We're gonna say hide automation function here. We're not going to do anything for this function just as of yet. We're gonna do that in the next episode. And of course, the next is Instagram navigation with the driver, username and the password, because we do not um, put should follow and should comment because we have these as a global variable. And we're just going to navigate to Instagram and start doing some work. All right, so I'm not going to uncomment that just as of yet because we're not gonna show that in the next video. In the next video, we're gonna be hiding the automation. Hiding the automation is going to be done, as I said, by triggering some flags into the JS path. Now, Selenium and uh, actually time and random is also going to help for the automation because we want to slow it down or do things too quickly. Also, I want to have a bit of a random factor. So for example, sometimes in a post, I'm gonna be waiting for two seconds, other times I'm gonna be waiting for four. It's gonna seem random, it's gonna seem human-like. But also the Instagram has a couple of scripts running in its page that you're not seeing. And these are gonna be checking if you are a bot. We're not talking about captures here, which are the things that say, all right, press this circle to show that you're not robot. You know these things, right? I mean, we're doing them all the time or um, choose five pictures that are pictures of cars. These are meant to hide the automation. Now, Instagram doesn't have captures, but it has other stuff. So that is why we need to hide the automation. And this is what we're gonna be seeing in the next episode. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.